Hello everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about luxury uh, products. Now, um, there is this conception, I want to say misconception, that luxury products have to have the durability of tanks. Why? Because they cost so much. There's this concept of, or this train of thought that leads us to believe that because something is so expensive, it should last a lifetime. Because something is defined as luxury, you should buy it once and then have it your whole life and it should never break, it should never fall apart, it should never show any wear and tear, it should never show any use. Okay, let's debunk this. Now, first and foremost, if you like this topic on my channel, subscribe to my channel. Uh, push also the join button next to the subscription button, become a member today, gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Dickable is built together. Thank you to all my patrons who have already pledged and to all my members who have already pledged. Without you, the Fashion Bunker wouldn't be here. I film every Saturday live on my channel. So this video is being filmed live in front of a virtual audience. I have my wonderful co-conspirators in the chats as I'm filming this video. So you guys, this is the topic. I personally believe that just because something is luxury, you can't expect it to be a tank. Go buy a tank if you want a tank. If you want a delicate tweed Chanel bag made out of silk tweed and wool tweed and cashmere tweed, and then you want to throw it about and use it and, and, and abuse it and think it's going to last, it's not. Luxury doesn't equal tank durability. It, it just doesn't. Luxury is a sort of, listen, honestly, I mean, we can talk about quality in terms of, well, certain materials utilized. Maybe you like a special type of cashmere and you're going to want Scottish cashmere and you're going to go and research a certain type of material and you're going to want to buy clothes that only have certain materials. And you could define that as being luxury. You could also define luxury people, you know, spending millions on watches because you want the Rolex with the 5,500,000 5, little diamonds in the, and you know, you could call that luxury because you can show off that you have the money to wear a watch that costs so much. If that's your definition of luxury, okay, so be it, that's luxury. Some people wanna buy a Maserati, some people wanna buy a Ferrari, and they think that's the definition of luxury because they can afford a car that is gonna, you know, cost you 100K, 200, 300, up to millions, when even a regular Fiat, <laughs> with a bit of tweaking can get you from A to B because it's just a car and it's much cheaper. I personally prefer taking the bus because it preserves the environment. If you can, take the bicycle, even better, or walk. God knows we, we could use a little bit of walking after lockdown for so many years. I think the biggest luxury that we truly have in our lives is time. That's the biggest luxury because once time is up, boo-boo, bye. Yeah, dead. You kick the bucket, it's over. So the only true luxury, of course, is time. The time we spend with our loved ones, with our family. That's the value that we can put into luxury. But objects, an Hermes crop, yeah, it was expensive. I mean, but, you know, well, this one is a bit durable, I gotta say. I had it for 11 years. So maybe it's a bad example because this one did not fall apart after a couple of years. It's been 11 years now and it, it's still, it still does its job quite well. But, you know, this is perhaps, I guess, luxury in another section of what luxury can be, like um, horse riding gear. You, you need it for sport activities. So it maybe needs some sort of durability, but it, it still is within that framework of luxury because it costs more, because it is branded and uh, parts of it are twirled and made by hand. So blah, blah, blah. But if we're gonna talk about more futile things, if you're not really riding a horse and you don't need a crop for it, I guess in my case, this is futile. Although this is a prop for my channel. So technically, uh, it's actually very practical for me. But other than that, it's not. But if you're going to buy a bag, and we're talking about people complaining all the time, oh my God, the Chanel bags are so expensive, but the ones made out of textile materials are super delicate. Silk, Chanel also does silk bags. They're also super delicate. It's silk. What do you expect? Now, I do agree when people say, hey, 
the leather bags and then the stitching is off. They didn't stitch it properly. Like that's a mistake. That's quality control. That is a whole other can of worms. And I'm not talking about the cheapening of quality control within luxury, because I believe that quality control within luxury should be at the highest standards. These brands should invest a good amount of money to pay the right people and to pay the right amount of people to work in their quality control departments. This is where they are cutting corners. This is where they are saving a lot of money by literally canceling entire quality control departments. And this is something I don't agree with. This is something that luxury should invest in and have more of rather than less of. But let's say even you, even though you have a wonderful quality control department, but you're still working with very delicate materials, obviously, despite the high quality control, your end result, your end product will be a delicate one. So luxury doesn't mean necessarily robust and resistant as a tank. It can in some cases. Uh, for example, when it comes to luxury travel goods, yes, to me, Louis Vuitton is a luxury travel brand. I don't see Louis Vuitton personally as a luxury clothing brand. I don't think about Louis when I think about clothes. I think about Louis when I think about a monogram canvas, a suitcase, a travel bag, a speedy, a wallet, these practical things. And why do I love Louis so much? Because it's durable. <laughs> this is a type of luxury. I would not buy a Chanel beauty case because I need to use a beauty case. I need to put cosmetics in there, makeup in there. I need to have it constantly on the go in and out. I have to be able to throw it around, use it, put it in my bag. So buying a delicate lambskin leather Chanel beauty pouch makes no sense to me because it because I'm looking for durability. When I'm looking into luxury within the sphere of travel wallets or beauty pouches or cosmetic pouches, that's when I go for Louis. But if I'm buying a bag, a mini bag, a clutch, something delicate, beautiful to see in terms of luxury, then I'm not necessarily looking for durability. Then I'm just looking for a special occasion piece. So obviously you're also not gonna wear certain bags on a daily basis. If you buy a small little mini tweed bag or a jersey or silk or velvet, it's a special occasion bag. You're also going to have your other bag that is your heavy duty bag that you're going to use, you know, out and about your tank bag. But then not every bag is meant to be a tank. So I think when we talk, or for example, people are buying luxury, the Audrey Allery or just jewelry, jewelry within the luxury brands, you know, there's already a marked up price because it's branded. So buying Cartier jewelry, uh, Van Cleef and Arpels, um, Damiani, I love Damiani actually, Tiffany & Co. It's like, okay, you're paying a premium just because there's a logo on it. But I've seen some tests done on Cartier Gold. Girl, that shit ain't the best quality. It just isn't. But it's Cartier and everybody wants their little, you know, love bracelet, their, their rings, the this and the that's, and it's, it's okay. It's a mass produced product that they produce very quickly. And because they have a logo on it, it costs a lot, but it gets dented easily, gets scratched easily. People are like, why is it easy? It is what it is. It's overpriced gold because it has a logo on it. It's not supposed to last forever. It's supposed to scratch and use up with time. You can't expect it to be a tank. Again, you're not buying a tank. You're buying a bracelet. In relatively sheesh quality, uh, despite it being gold. Yeah. Yes world to you consumer there's gold and gold now even if we're still in the realm of 18 carat 11 carat 24 carat gold doesn't matter there's a difference in the quality of it there's gold and gold you can't just oh well it's 24 carat gold so it is 24 carat gold that's the best no there's 24 carat gold and 24 carat gold and 24 carat gold and they're all different and the brands can make them better or less good and when it comes to cartier it ain't the best but that's also when brands can get away with shit when they know that the consumer 
is blindly going to purchase whatever they churn out just because it has their name on it. And quite a few of these luxury brands are playing that game with us. That game of like, you know, we are famous. Our brand is popular. So we know you are going to keep buying despite the fact that we're lowering quality control, despite the fact that we're lowering the quality of our raw materials utilized, and despite the fact that we're lowering investment in our design teams to continue bettering and advancing and evolving the design of our products. That's the bottom line. So when I observe the durability and quality of luxury, I don't just observe, oh, okay, well, this bag is super delicate. It's going to rip easily or not, or color transfer or not. No, I look at a lot of different factors. What is the brand? How long has the brand existed? What does the brand stand for? Um, what reputation does it have? What material is the product I'm buying from the brand made out of? What is the product made for? Um, what do I need it for? Because this is, again, an interesting example, the, the toiletry pouch, because yes, it's a toiletry pouch, but we've seen Lady Diana use it as a little clutch. We've seen Marc Jacobs himself when he was working at Louis Vuitton use it as a little evening clutch. So like, what are you using this for? Is this going to be your little evening clutch, your little out and about clutch, or is it going to be your toiletry? I use it for both. In fact, I have two. <laughs> I have one for, you know, out and about, and I have one that I just, you know, use. So, but all of these things you got to consider. If you're buying a delicate bag, maybe think of buying a smaller version of it so that you use it for special occasions when you go to the opera, to, to the I don't know, dinner, once we, we, we're allowed to go out again uh, freely without masks and all that shebang. Um, when you're going out to the museum, to the movies or something like that, you know, you don't want to buy a huge bag made out of a delicate silk and then complain when it tears. So you got to think about exactly what you're going to use it for and how it fits your lifestyle. And then according to your lifestyle, you choose the materials of the luxury product that suit you. That's the bottom line, really. And that's how you can be happy with luxury. And the bottom, bottom line is at the end of the day, we're paying these exorbitant amounts uh, of, of money for products that cost so much because there's a logo on them of brands that have these more or less big heritages on their backs. And we buy into a dream. So we are paying for how these products make us feel. First and foremost, don't ever forget that. That's the bottom, bottom line. You are spending all that extra cash on these products because they make you dream. They make you feel like you belong to this group that created this whole concept of this brand and yada, yada. Catch my drift? That's where the money goes to. The biggest portion, the chunk of the surplus, the overprice of that luxury product goes to your dream, not to the durability of the product. And if you're fine with that, then you're good to go. Then you buy the product. It lives the life it lives. It gets damaged when it gets damaged. You enjoy it as long as you enjoy it. And you call it a day. And we move on. That's what it is. It, it, enjoy the, your luxury products. Feel them. You know, touch them. <laughs> Be them. You know what I mean? <laughs> and um, I'm telling you, like, look, this, I got this, this, the Metier da Chanel um, 2021 Chateau de Dame collection. Living it living in it, living for it, and just enjoying it. Yeah, even combined with a t-shirt. Why not? It makes me dream. It makes me feel my oats, you know? And that's the bottom line. It fulfills my fantasy. Is this thing durable? I don't know. <laughs> last a couple of years or forever? I don't know. I'm not going to last forever, so why should this? That's the bottom line. So, let, so that, that's all I wanted to say. Let me read some of your chats. Um, Aaron says, just to have a logo on a piece of jewelry is not art. Right? Yeah, Ollie says, stitches and batches. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. 
But anyway, I have a big problem um, to use and wear my pieces, says Erin. I mean, it is a problem, especially when things cost a lot. You're a liability because you, you, you feel like, I spent so much money on this thing. So you feel like your money's being wasted if that product is used. But that's a, we got to rewire our way of thinking and we got to let go of that. We got to really let go of that. You really got to let go of that. Uh, Suzy Q says, all that matters is if you love what you buy. Oh, preach, Suzy Q. Andrea says, wear your diamonds every day. Yes. And don't forget, Andrea, you are a diamond too. JJ Diary says, nothing lasts forever when it comes to objects. Take care of your stuff and be careful with it, but don't forget to enjoy it too. Really good point. Iris Elisa says, couldn't agree more, Jacob. I think some people need to justify the cost in their head be it durability, be it investment, etc. This is why I can't justify the price of anything from a luxury brand except a fragrance. It is an unusual form of art. I don't want to enjoy it. I want to experience it. But also, you're going to have a lot of people telling you, well, perfumes aren't worth shit because diddly squat, because you use them up and then they're just empty containers. Like people, some people feel that perfumes are the biggest waste or cosmetics. To me, again, it's a great example of luxury. They make you dream. A perfume makes you dream. That's the bottom line. The rich stay rich because they do care what it costs, says Susie Collector. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Risk accuses also some wealthy are buying before the price increase. So anyway, guys, this is why is thank you so much um, for watching this video. Thumb it up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel and uh, share with us your opinions in the comment sections down below. Will ya? Until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye.